Americans are different. We look different, we sound different, we come from different regions, we have different interests, different politics, different economic situations. But in the eyes of the law, we're supposed to be treated equally. And if one person is being oppressed, if one group feels that justice is being denied, that's an affront to all of us, to the values on which this nation was founded. So, Helen. Yes. If someone were watching this video and wondering if they should come next year to Policy Day, what would you tell them? I would say it's a very exciting day. And they should come because it's always great to hang out with you <laughs> and great people and actually have an impact. Awesome. Awesome. Anybody have anything to add to that? I mean, you get to go on the hill and meet representatives. They're representatives from your district. There you go. And? We also representing the Asian um, Pacific Islander community. And we want to have a strong voice. This is all about sustaining homeownerships and help uh, families to sustain credit and, you know, do, um, do everything that they can to achieve their American home dreams. Most Americans understand a fundamental truth about our country, that while almost every nation in the world to some extent admits immigrants, there's something unique about America. We don't simply welcome new immigrants. We are born of immigrants. It is our oldest tradition, part of what makes us not only exceptional, but what makes us secure and prosperous and free, which is why it's so difficult to understand why some folks are still standing in the way of comprehensive immigration reform. Just uh, head up to four six in, in the elevator. Four six. Okay. Thank you. Four six. How's that working exactly? Yeah. Four six has a. Maybe it's just a one in front of everything. Yeah. No, it is. Yeah. So everything in this building, you're gonna have a one in front of everything, and um, yeah, the only, and then you're gonna have a two in front of everything in Brainwork. Ah, thank, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Although I was looking for sixteen. Yeah, I knew there was a trick to it. Um, that's why I asked. Is it all? You know, last it year, Boston, it is. <laughs> I think in Boston has an appointment with one of the senator from Boston. And, and I guess they know him very well because they let them use the, uh, the underground drain. Yes. That is awesome. I want to go. Like fun. Yeah. some of the congressmen? No, it's, yeah. it's not difficult. It's just the time-consuming mm -hmm. way for them to give us a confirmation you know, about our requests. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they don't answer right away, or they, you know, they say, oh, sorry, Senator, or the Congress is not here. So, boom, bam, they did not offer you any other options. So mm -hmm. you have to kind of like request for it. Mm -hmm. And we meet with his staff, you okay. know. Then they say, OK, yeah, that person would be available to meet with you on that day, this time. You're part of the lifeblood of this nation. You are our teachers and our faith leaders, our doctors, our caretakers, our artists, our shopkeepers, our police officers and firefighters. You are our soldiers and our sailors, airmen, Marines, Coast Guardsmen, defending our freedom every day.
and increasingly you are a powerful, visible force in American political life. Now, given that success, sometimes it's easy for people to buy into the myth of model minority and gloss over the real challenges and discrimination that still exist. Our first appointment, how'd it go? So I know the lay of the land in terms of the district pretty well. Okay. And where are you from? Uh, originally from New Jersey. Don't oh. hold that against me. <laughs> 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 so good. Where are you from? Uh, Central, right by Princeton. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh. Is that area at all? Well, I know it's pretty. I have, I'm not that familiar with it. Yeah. <laughs> How long have you been here? Um, in the area. Years. I went to school in, at Towson. Mm -hmm. Okay. Nice. Are you guys from the district? Mm -hmm. Anybody? Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, Maryland, mm -hmm. Virginia. Maryland? Mm -hmm. Where in Maryland? Well, I live in Baltimore County. Okay. And I work in Howard. So. Where in Baltimore County? So right near Towson. Okay, great. Near Oak Road. Of course. You know, uh, Bill and Bill. Uh, Bill Bateman's? Bateman's down the street from there. Okay, yeah. sure. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I've one of Bateman's best wings. <laughs> exactly. Town, for sure. And Aaron is also from Baltimore. Baltimore, Randallstown. Oh, uh, so that's our district too. I'm originally from Boston. I've been in D.C. for about 11 years. Yeah, no accent anymore, huh? No, I couldn't. Um, my parents wouldn't allow that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> they wouldn't allow it. Got it. Yeah. Where are you yeah. from? Yeah. Originally. Originally from Vietnam, but I live in um, Alexandria, Virginia. You know, being with the Asian American Pacific Islander community is like being with family. I love you back. As many of you know, I grew up in Hawaii. I, I spent time in, in Indonesia as a young, uh, young boy. Uh, the, the food, the culture, the spirit of the Asia Pacific region, that's, that's who I am. And that's why it gives me so much pleasure to see all of you and to thank all of you for everything you're doing to make sure that the AAPI community is participating in the political process. We are with the Asian Real Estate Association of America, mm -hmm. and we have a, we had about we have about thirty seven chapters. Mm -hmm. So locally, we have a DC major chapter that cover the DC, Virginia, and Maryland. Mm -hmm. And today is our uh, first day of our National Policy Day, mm -hmm. where we go and, and do a lot of field visits. And uh, what we want to bring is giving you the uh, brochure about our magazine and the uh, three points plan policy that we try to um, have the Congress to support. And um, so the first one that we would like, um, that we really push for this year is called No Other. Okay. And what that is, is, um, yeah, what that is, is the, um, the campaign that we want the Census Bureau to change. Because right now we have you know three main box on the census um, data form, which is one Caucasian, one is Black American, one mm -hmm. is Hispanic. Mm -hmm. Everybody else grouped together uh, under the other category. And you know API, we felt very strongly that we should have our own um, as well. Mm -hmm. You know to represent the true number and the true census um, data because we uh, have over $600 billion in mortgage within the AAPI communities. So, you know, if you're not collecting the right data, mm -hmm. you know, with the income, with the household, um, and everything else, then, you know, our voice is not going to be here correctly. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the key things that we want to do this year mm -hmm. is to have the Congress support and we, you know, we're gonna be meeting with the Census Bureau. We have a, a press conference later on today at one over the National Press Club. I don't know if you have time. Mm -hmm. You know, you're more than welcome to come and observe and, and see the association, you know, in action. 
So, um, you know, and then now I have your information, we would like to invite you to our local events. Mm -hmm. So that way you get to know us okay. a little bit more. Yeah. Sure. And we want to get to know you more too. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the, um, the key things that we, we do um, this morning. So, so what um, would that option be on the census? What would you like to say? Um, you know, Asian, Asian American, Asian, yeah, Asian. A, A, API, yeah, A, yeah, Asian, Asian American, 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 Asian and that means we have to be well informed, we have to engage with our government, and we have to vote. Not, when, not just when it's time to elect a president, but every single election. School boards matter. <laughs> County offices matter. State's attorneys' races matter. State legislative races matter. That's how we honor the trailblazers who sacrificed so that we could be here today, and how we fulfill our promise as a nation. So on that note, when we go into this, you know, who we are and the fact that many of our um, members are in our, in our population that we represent, mm -hmm. they don't qualify for mortgages in the traditional way because they don't, do, they don't have a credit history. history. Okay. They, you know, they come from countries and cultures where debt is just, you, mm -hmm. you don't Mm -hmm. purposely go into debt mm -hmm. in order to have you know credit history and right. buy more so there are there are um, HR bill 123 is is is, is um, to try and propose alternative methods mm -hmm. in addition to the traditional credit score is that Keith Ellison's bill Al Green's Al Green mm -hmm. yeah okay and basically there's, you know, the traditional credit, you know, you do, you do the application, they do they pull the credit score, but there's also like, there's called something called FICO 9 and um, Vantage 2.0. They're also, they're just alternative uh, right. scoring methods. It takes they take into other, like other considerations. Energy bills, right? Bills mm -hmm. and, you know, Rent. 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 Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So it gives it a more holistic picture rather than just, you know, three scores or two scores. Yeah, because a lot of people, like in Asian uh, community or culture, we don't believe in in, in debts. Mm -hmm. You know, if you don't have money, that's it. You rent. Yes. You know, there's no such thing as mortgage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like um, Helen mentioned, is um, I don't know, uh, you know, like in her country, Korea, if you apply for a loan or you take out something or you write bad checks, mm -hmm. you go to jail. Mm -hmm. So there's no mm -hmm. such thing as credit mm -hmm. score. So a lot of time, a lot of the older generation afraid of that, and they don't want to be labeled as, you know, a debtor, you know, so, and so, you know, you don't have any credit card information or credit card debts or anything like that, then you have low credit score, because mm -hmm. you don't have anything that or you Or they're can, unscorable. Yeah, unscorable. Yeah. So, um, you know, that's kind of like unfair. You know, because they should be able to show, okay, yes, they've been paying rent on time, they've been, you know, do this and that. So give them a a, a opportunity, a put, a, a opportunity to apply for a mortgage to buy a home, because that's helped our economy as well. You know, a real estate one home sold is create so many jobs. Yeah. You know, so that's that's kind of like a win win situation for everybody. Yeah, it's just a general picture credit score. Right. And that's policy point number two in your brochure. Yes. So, yeah. So this handout go, goes over to start who we represent okay. and the, the numbers and this is, this, <laughs> this brochure gives you like the top word that capital gains. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's a great way to, yeah. you know, like in the game of Monopoly. Mm -hmm. And I get the keep intention. Buying. But yeah. I'm exactly. Okay. And if there's no, you know, only one property qualifies. So how it's is this going to get defeated? How is this going to be? The language is coming up. What are you expecting it to be in a bill? The appropriation process, or we don't know yet. Well, the, you know, different. It, I think it's it just keeps coming up, and yeah. uh, different congressmen mm -hmm. talk about it. You know, when they okay. when, but we don't want it to ever go away. Okay. Because <laughs> I think it's a great. It's it's one of the great tax laws that. Um, 
allows people to build wealth. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. we want the investor to keep on investing. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't want to discourage them and, and they'd be like, you know, there's no more benefit for me. Mm -hmm. Why do I need to invest? Mm -hmm. You know, and that's going to create a lot of um, downturn in the real estate market. And as far as our, our, you know, our constituency, the Asian Pacific Islander population, mm -hmm. apparently there's, we are 30% more likely to buy outside of a you know, different area than where we live. Okay. In a different state, so you know, it's, it, it impacts the whole country. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, those are our three policy points. That works. Do you have any mm -hmm. questions for us? Um, you guys going to drop off business cards? Yes. We know that certain AAPI groups still face higher dropout rates, obstacles to employment, even higher rates of some diseases. So this is part of the reason why, under my administration, we're trying to improve the federal government's data collection so we get a better picture of which communities might still need additional resources and attention to overcome some of these barriers. We reestablished the White House Initiative on Asian American and Pacific Islanders to take a closer look at specific issues facing different AAPI communities. And I want to thank uh, Duota for her amazing leadership. Those efforts have made a difference. And I'll give you a good example. After the BP spill in, in the Gulf, all recovery information was translated into multiple languages so that we could address the concerns of Vietnamese and you know, Khmer fishermen getting back on their feet after the disaster. When we passed the Affordable Care Act, 20 million uninsured adults have coverage among Asian Americans who aren't yet old enough to qualify for Medicare. The uninsured rate has dropped by more than 60 percent because of what we did, because of Obamacare. And we're going to keep working to make sure everybody gets the coverage they need. We've worked hard to make sure that the API community is represented at every level of the federal government. That's why I've made appointments of API judges to the federal bench. As Judy noted, we've made more API judicial appointments than every other president combined. Because we believe that the judiciary has to look like America. we've been able to achieve. But in addition to all of you looking very nice, <laughs> part of the reason we're here is because we understand we can't be complacent. The actions I've taken on my own can't take the place of what we really need, which is Congress to pass a comprehensive immigration reform bill. It's the right thing to do, smart thing to do, and you have to, you have the power to push Congress to do it. What's up? Hey, how are you, man? How are you? Been videotaping today, so. Oh, hey. Yeah, after I choice. Okay. So I'm proud of all of you for rallying around the Muslim and Sikh and Arab and South Asian communities who face a rising tide of bigotry and harassment. To support your work, we recently launched the AAPI Bullying Prevention Task Force to look at ways that the federal government can help your communities prevent and respond to bullying. I want to thank Ario for the great work. Uh, I see the founders here. Uh, Two done, two more to go. upset with Congress, but you're not showing up to vote in midterm elections, not just presidential elections, that has to change. And if you, if you doubt what's at stake, I think you obviously haven't been reading the papers. Where are you going first? Be, and then go out. We have a very turn right.
just a little bit. Yes, that's all. We've got to push back against anti-immigrant sentiment in all of its forms, especially by those who are trying to soak it just to seek political gain and just to try to get headlines. And just as we moved beyond no Irish need apply signs, just as we moved beyond questioning the loyalty of Catholics, just as we moved beyond the active persecution of Chinese immigrants, just as we learned the, the the stain on our history from our treatment of Japanese immigrants and even Japanese Americans in World War II, we are going to move beyond today's anti-immigrant sentiment as well. We will live up to our ideals. We just have to keep speaking out against hatred and bigotry in all of its forms. And I want you to know that I am looking forward to making sure that you are well represented in my administration if I'm so fortunate enough to be your president. I'm putting you all on notice. We're going to put a lot of folks to work to knock down all the barriers that stand in the way of Americans getting ahead. And together, as Judy noted, we've accomplished a lot of things. And one thing that's clear, and you can see it in this room, is the amazing diversity of the AAPI community from Southeast Asia to the Indian subcontinent, from the Pacific Islands to, to the native Hawaiians of my home state. You represent the heritage that spans the globe. Your families may come from different countries. They may speak different languages, practice different faiths. Some of you live on the land of your ancestors. And for others, the journey began when somebody in your family, or maybe you, decided to leave behind what you knew to seek a better life in a new world. And what's been exciting is how many local communities are taking it upon themselves to welcome our newest Americans into the fold and introduce them to both the rights and responsibilities as well as benefits of citizenship. Just this week, we finalized a policy to help reunite Filipino World War II vets with their family members who are stuck in our immigration backlog. These actions have made this country stronger by welcoming people like uh, Regina Lenisma. Where Where's Regina? There she is. So I want to tell Regina's story because it's, a, it's an example of, of What's at stake here? Regina came to the United States from the Philippines when she was five years old. But when her father, who was an engineer, fell ill, he had to give up his job, which meant he could no longer secure documentation for his family. So Regina's mom supported the family by working at a hair salon. Regina grew up as American as anybody else. She didn't know until she was in middle school that she was undocumented. And she didn't understand until then that she'd be perpetually in danger of being deported from the only country she had ever called home. As a junior in high school, Regina requested relief under the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals, or DACA, policy that we put in place. And today, she's a sophomore studying economics at the University of Maryland. Her future is bright, and America's better off because she is here powerful manifestation of this creed that is as old as our founding. E pluribus unum, out of many one, we're all strangers once until America welcomed us home. And in the end, this is the work of self-government. It is hard. It is slow. It can be frustrating. Sometimes it's scary to speak out against wrongs and to help our fellow citizens when they need a hand. That's not always convenient. My goal, now let's make sure we get to work. Thanks, everybody. God bless you.